Hello Booktube, my name is Kate, this is my channel Chapter Kate. Today I'm going to be talking about a topic that has been going around a lot lately on Booktube and that is consumerism in the Booktube community and overspending on books. Hauls are a type of video that have been around YouTube for a while now. The makeup community um, is really big on hauls, fashion um, vloggers are pretty big on hauls and of course the Booktube community is also big on hauls. Um, and that is because it's a way of being excited about what you have gotten and being validated in what you've gotten when you share it online. So you're able to kind of be like, look, this is what I have and this is a way of me quickly showing you something that interests me. Um, however, it seems that the conversation surrounding those types of videos has changed and kind of altered over time. And the general consensus seems to be that people can pretty much do whatever they want with their money. You know, if you have money and you want to buy a lot of books, fine. If you are minimalist and you don't want to have a lot of books, fine. If you use the library only, that's fine. I haven't really seen a lot of counter arguments that go against that general idea. Um, however, I do want to talk a little bit about my own sort of spending habits because I know a lot of people We'll talk about they spent a lot of money on books and they're put they're put themselves on a a book buying ban or um, oh I spent a lot more money on books today I need to do better you know things like that and I feel like it's it's something that I really need to address with my own spending um, I talk a lot about my bipolar disorder on here um, sometimes I also talk about my PTSD however with bipolar disorder there's a symptom that a lot of people do not talk about they talk about the mania and being happy and being really hyper they talk about the depression and being really really low usually the attention goes to the depression because that's what people are concerned about or the anger that comes with bipolar disorder a lot of times because that concerns people however something that a symptom that no one seems to want to talk about is overspending um, with bipolar disorder having these random spending sprees is a super important symptom to watch out for. In fact, one time when I was in partial hospitalization, um, the overspending and talking about that was one of the things that sort of supported the diagnosis that they had for me of bipolar disorder. Um, when I am manic, I spend a lot of money. Now, what is the reason behind this? I don't know. I, when I'm a manic, I feel very impulsive. I feel like I need to do something to change my environment. Something needs to happen. Something significant. Everything is significant when you're manic. So every decision needs to make some sort of impact. Um, a lot of times when I was in high school, I would just dye my hair different colors. I couldn't do anything funky to my hair, so it would just be different shades of like reddish brown and things like that. Um, or I'd get my hair cut off. And that would be something impulsive that would sort of change something in my life and make some sort of significant impact. Um, as I got older and I got a job, spending was something that could make a significant impact. I could buy things and I'd have something new to pay attention to. My dog just snorted at me. Come here. Come here. So yeah, no, I would buy things. Hello puppy. I would buy things and then I would have something new to pay attention to. And that is something that I'm still, still very much struggling with. And sometimes my spending will change depending on my current obsession. With mania, I get really obsessed with certain things. Um, writing is something I've been obsessed with in the past. Writing music, um, drawing, um, making videos, reading books, buying books, collecting books, all that good stuff. So this year, since May, because I wasn't really reading that much until May this year, um, since May I've spent over $1,500 on books. Um, some people might not think that's a lot. Some people are probably like, wow, that's way too much money on books. And you would be right. For me, that is way too much money on books. Um, I'm hesitant to talk about, you know, my finances on here. And I'm not going to talk about how much I make or how much my husband makes or anything like that. But I do want to give a number to give a general idea of how big this problem is for me. Um, and, of course, on Booktube, there is a positivity. There's, you know, there's, you don't have to feel pressured to buy a lot of books. And there's also don't shame people if they do buy a lot of books. However, in my case, I believe that I need to spend less money on books because it's gotten to a point where I'm not in control of it and I don't feel like I'm in control of it. And being out of control is not positive. I am trying to approach my spending with books in a less gluttonous way. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about choice. Some people think that booktube pressures people into spending money on books. And I want to say... I haven't really gotten that vibe from booktube since I've been around and I've been around since around May-ish. Um, I know that's not very long, but I have not gotten that vibe at all. And even if booktube did pressure you into buying books, we're taught from a young age not to give into peer pressure. Ultimately, our choices are our own choices. I don't choose to have bipolar disorder and I don't choose to have mania and to have impulsivity 
and to, and to have that really common symptom of spending money. However, when I do spend money, that is a choice I make. It's very, very hard not to make that choice with bipolar disorder, but ultimately I do make that choice myself. And so I do think it is important for us to stop blaming book two for spending because ultimately we do have that choice on our own and no one else is making that choice for us. Certainly not strangers over camera in an online book community. No one's making that choice for me. I am making that choice for myself. Now that I've gotten that fun soapbox out of the way, I'm going to look at my actual notes about what I'm going to talk about. So a lot of people, when I talk about how I spend way too much money on books or I have a lot of books, they're like, well, why don't you consider getting rid of some books? And then I just get very annoyed. I get agitated and I get defensive because when I buy books, I feel like I'm building sort of a collection for myself. I like to collect books. Um, I like to have them. I like physical things. I know that I that might seem materialistic. I'm not materialistic in most things in my life. However, I like to have the things I like having. I like to have certain instruments that I like to have. I like to have books. I didn't really grow up in a family that was, you know, um, impoverished. We started out not having a lot and we, my parents grew their own businesses and they built a life for us and they were able to do that. Um, I was never wanting, I was an only child, so I wasn't spoiled and I had the things that I needed and often what I wanted. Um, what I will say is that having items that were mine gave me a connection to something because being an only child I didn't have those sibling connections. I had cousins that I was pretty close to and I had friends um, but my friendships weren't quite as tight as I wanted them to be like when I was very young um, and so I would have items like I'd have my stuffed animals, I'd have pets and I'd have things so I definitely made relationships with items and um, put memories on items and I found that items helped me sort of connect with things. So with books, I, I find that I love to have them, I like to hold them, I like to feel them, I love that tactile stimulation of holding them and having them and having them readily available to me if I want to like pull them out and look at something I can. And I've always dreamed of having a large library. Um, I have a pretty sizable library at the moment of my own. Um, it's me and my husband's books all combined together and it's it's a pretty big library um, for someone's home and I love that and I love that I have that and, and, and I just don't understand why the suggestion of unhauling is going to help with my spending. I've already spent the money. Um, I understand that you can take things to used bookstores but you're not going to get very much for them. Unhauling doesn't do anything for my book spending habits. I don't care that I have a lot of books. I care that I'm spending so much so often on books. So that's just a little thing that you need to know about me. I will get a little bit defensive if you suggest Ion Hall. But then again, probably not. I'll probably be like, oh yeah, 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 that's a cool idea. And then I'll just brush it off because I don't, I don't want to unhaul my books. And sometimes I feel like I should be because people suggest it and they feel guilty almost that I'm not unhauling books. Um, and then I'll talk to my husband. He's like, well, why are you feeling like you have to get rid of books? I'm like, I don't know. So I've stopped feeling that way. If I don't want to get rid of a book, I'm not going to get rid of a book. I spent the money on it and I wanted it for a reason, so I'm keeping it. Now I just want to move on to my plan, okay? Because I'm not the type of person that I want to revel in what's wrong or what is incorrect. Instead, I want to look at what can I do to sort of fix it, to work towards fixing it. What is something I can do to improve my state in this? So now I'm going to discuss my plan moving forward financially with books. And so I have five different sort of mini plans and I would really really like to hear your comments on these. Which plan do you think would work for you? Which plan have you used before? Things like that. Um, so plan A is quitting cold turkey. And a lot of people have done this by putting themselves on a book buying ban or deciding to only use libraries, things like that. This I have an issue with. Not for, you know, you, not in general, not for anybody that wants to do this, but for me, I can't do this plan because there's not a day in this world where I'm not going to want more books or that I'm not going to have the urge to spend money on books. So quitting cold turkey is not something I can do, and I know that about myself. Plan B, I've tried before, and it's buying one book per every so many books. So every time I've read five books, that equals me buying one new book. Or every time I've read three books, that equals me buying one new book. And this keeps your sort of ratio in your own personal library in a better place, basically. So every time you're reading a certain amount of book, you're only getting one new one per all those books that you're reading. I usually keep it at three. So, you know, I would read three books and basically at the end of the month, I would calculate how many books I'd read. So if I'd read 12 books at the end of the month, then I could buy four books. Um, and this 
kind of worked and kind of didn't. I got to where I didn't like the plan because I would go to a used bookstore and I'd find these random little books that were like 50 cents each or a dollar each and I didn't understand why they were worth as much as like a $20 nice new book. So that didn't work so much well for me. I rationalized myself right on out of that plan but it is definitely a plan that could work for someone else. It just didn't really work for me. Plan C is Oh, plan C is kind of attributing a certain money amount to every book that you read in a month and then using that much money as your book buying budget. So for example, if I, I'm going to go back to 12, if I read 12 books in a month and I let myself spend $3 on books per every book read, then I would get $36 at the end of the month to spend on books. And I liked that plan because if I bought used books and I was, you know, financially savvy, I would be able to buy more. Um, and if I bought, you know, some really nice books, I wasn't buying as many. And I liked this plan. However, it does require some keeping track of things. But so does plan B with keeping up with how many books you're, you know, reading. So both of those are very similar. One, you're just buying according to how many um, books you get. And the second one, it's, it's more of a dollar amount. So they're very similar in that way. Plan D is having a fixed book budget. So basically you look at your um, your income for the month and you decide what percentage of that you would like to basically put aside for specifically books. Now, um, this could be like a percentage. This could be a specific dollar amount. Um, you could also kind of use this alongside one of the other plans and say like if I go to a book festival I'm going to give myself this much money for that. Or if I go on vacation, I don't know, if you buy books on vacation that's fine. It does make airplanes hard. I will just say from experience. But like if you want to give yourself a certain amount of money for like a trip or a festival or something like that, a conference, then that is kind of a way of incorporating that book budget with one of the other plans. Or you can just have that as your baseline. You know, every month I have this much money for books. But then that doesn't really give you a lot of leeway if there is a special event that happens or if you don't spend all your money and things like that. And then plan E is something that I won't do because of something else I've discussed earlier in this video. And that is basically being able to buy one new book for every book that you unhaul. Um, so if you unhaul, you know, three books, then you can buy three books. Um, you can also make it like for every two books unhauled, you get three books or something. You can do any kind of ratio you want, but it's basically basing the number of new books that you're going to purchase on how many books that you get rid of. So um, those are my five sort of plans. I think I'm going to try going with plan C which is, you know, giving myself a money amount for every book I read. And then at the end of the month, that's how much money I have to spend on books. Um, but with that said, I'm also going to give myself, if I do have any book, you know, events that I go to, giving myself a small budget to kind of go to those because that is an outlier um, sort of event that doesn't fit into like the typical month for me. And I'm going to try this plan for the rest of the year um, and see how it goes. And then if it goes well, then I'll continue it into 2019. If it doesn't go well, then I might rework it a little bit and try it again for a couple months and see what happens. But that's my book buying plan and my spending habits and all that good stuff. So, And I mentioned to Rhiannon from Crescent Moon Reads that I might be doing this video. She said she was thinking about doing something similar. So I will link her below if she's posted hers already and if she hasn't whatever I'll, I'll try to put it down there anyway once it does pop up so she's awesome and you should definitely check her out but that's all for this video if you would like more of this junk subscribe below bye dripping over shadows and i'm drowning in the night i feel the soldiers coming i'm pulling up a fight i feel my eyes